Join the Our Game Supporters Club at Patreon for €5 Euros per month to get audio podcasts of the Hurling and Football Show and much more exclusive material. I want to move on to the situation now with Peter Casey. He has been cleared to play in the All-Ireland Final and myself and Michael Verney talked about last week how big of a figure is the Napierschuk forward. And I'd have to say, and Michael Verney will jump back on in a second, that I think it's one of the it's a decisive factor because Peter Casey is such a good player that he could be the Peter Casey could be the difference between winning and losing an All Ireland final. So having him available for this game, I think that removes a massive headache for John Kiley and Paul Kinnerk and the rest of his management team. Because if Peter Casey didn't play, the other options they're good options. But Pat Ryan is normally used in the last, let's say, five minutes of a game going into injury time when defences are a little bit stretched, and he normally does punish them. He hasn't really trusted him to start too often. Uh, Barry Murphy hasn't seen championship time, and I can't remember him seeing championship time in the last three or four seasons. He was off the panel for a while. Cahill O'Neill is very young. Graham Mulcahy's form just isn't quite there. He's obviously been a brilliant player for so many years. So uh, the Peter Casey getting off is huge, Michael. Yeah, no, I'd agree with you, Shane. Uh, there were so many uh, consequences of him not playing if he was if he was suspended. They were going to have to probably start Mulcahy, and then they were pulling, taking someone off the bench, taking an option off the bench. His form hasn't been outstanding. Maybe he could have been gone after 45, 50 minutes, and then somebody is in earlier than they're used to been been in, and then all of a sudden you have you know potential uh, problems. Maybe if Dermot Burns is injury, his ankle injury comes back to roost again. So I think it's just a massive, massive option for them that they, I, I, I genuinely, I, it's a real game changer for me. I have to say, I'm not saying I, I thought Cork were going to win the game, but I, I thought, you know, it definitely, you know, balanced things up a lot more. And that's not, you know, people are running away and saying, you know, Casey's, you know, he's not, you know, like maybe we're blowing his, you know, his influence out of proportion. But I just think it's all the consequences that him uh, been missing would have had on the rest of their squad and the way they set up and when they were going to make potential substitutes. So I definitely think uh, it definitely tips the scales uh, in Lim- a little bit further in Limerick's favour, in my view, anyway. Yeah, he's a very, very difficult player to tie down. Like, when you try and plan your team to stop Limerick, You've so many fires to put out, and he's an underrated, like, and like what he does is he floats all around the pitch. He gave away a penalty against Cork in the Munster semi final, but he had chased about 80 yards. He had chased Cork do lovely interplay where they run off the shoulder, and I just think they're developing such a, a great style of hurling. But Casey had chased. 80 yards, and if you if you watch back that penalty when um, penalty decision when Connor Cahalan is soloing in inside the D, Cahill has been or sorry Casey has been coming the whole way with the play, and then obviously he t- takes the man down. But he's so good at just getting around the pitch, getting on the ball. He has lightning reflexes. It doesn't matter what way you throw the ball at him, he'll get a hurley to it, he'll get a hand to it, whatever. And he just puts the opposition under so much pressure because he can turn and beat you. And what do teams and defenders hate? Someone who'll turn and beat you. You know, player, players get yellow carded when they mark Peter Casey because he commits them and makes them make stupid tackles. And I'm not saying he induces fouls, but he's, he just puts defenders on the back foot and make them look silly at times. It's fear. It's fear, yeah. It's fear that he'll slip you because he will slip you, no problem, if you over, if you overcommit. Um, also, the last day, and like, it was just even probably heightened the last day, where people would say he was, you know, relatively quiet from play. Some of his little stick pass and through the eye of a needle, which is beautiful. Oh, yeah. uh, for Aaron Galan, I think it was the one where Galan put it over the bar, I think. It was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, it was just a lovely pass through the eye of a needle. Now, the one thing I will say is uh, the court defenders, um, stature wise, particularly uh, O'Donoghue and Niall O'Leary are the perfect size to match up with him. And that they're going to be really interesting duels, whoever whoever picks them up there. But uh, Well, Tip put a six foot four Barry Heffernan on him. And to me, I mean, maybe it was weighed up and we're like, this is the best option we have. But, you know, something like that, it goes contrary to the point that you're making, which is a guy of similar low centre of gravity that it makes more sense. Well, like I think, um, you know, if you have a, you know, a five foot uh, nine or ten defender, you know, if, you know, the, the opposition team land in a six foot two or three, they're going to try and take advantage of, you know, the height disparity or whatever. But if you have a five foot ten defender and is a five or eight, five, eight, five, nine attacker, they just match up. They do like, they just match up perfectly. The lads will be able to match them for pace 
Um, they mightn't be able to match them for trickery, but they they but they will fancy their chances of tying him down somewhat. But that's kind of easier said than done too. He's I think he's ten points from play in in three games so far this year. That's despite the fact he was sent off after an hour at last, and he spent he spent some time in the sim bin against Cork as well. But I just think um. I just think he gives them so much more options, so much more options, and it means that their impact off the bench is a lot more potent as well. Because their bench has definitely not lit it up this year. Far from it. In in their three games, they've got five points off the bench, two of which came from Aaron Galan, who is a starter. So you could essentially say they've got three points off guys who regularly come off the bench. And I think there are parallels with the with Dublin in that the bench press that they had, you know, that Limerick had with We'll just say Shane Shane Dowling coming in in 18 and Shane Dowling coming in 19. I think he got 1-4 against Cork in the semi-final. A, a crucial goal in the final. Casey was coming in then. Now all of a sudden Casey's a starter. Dowling's retired. Same with the dubs. Uh, McMenamin who was coming in. McCauley was coming in. They're not on the scene anymore. So I definitely think it's an important one. If Cork are with them on the hour mark, I think they'll really, really fancy their chances. Yeah, and like some people kind of balked at us saying that Cork probably have a better panel. That's what we're talking about. We're not saying that Cork have a better start in 15 per se. I mean, you could have a nice little debate about that. But some of the benches off the, uh, some of the options off the bench for Cork are brilliant. I mean, Shane Kingston, there's a question in there from one of our commenters. Uh, I can't see it just there now at the moment, but asking should Shane Kingston start on in the All Ireland final? We'll get to that a bit more later in the week. But even just the guys that they brought in the last day, Shane Kingston scored seven. Now, he may start the next day. Alan Cadigan, I mean, what a player to be able to bring off the bench. Declan Dalton, who has played a nice bit of senior in the last couple of years, got to an All-Ireland uh, Intermediate Final with Father O'Neill's. Just a beautiful pair of wrists. Um, Alan Connolly, you know, Shane Barrett, maybe he'll start, maybe he won't. Damien Cahillan came off the bench. Colm Splann can't get a sniff. At Owen Cadigan coming... came off the bench. Yeah, obviously, um, Colm Splann has had a lot of injuries. Sean O'Leary-Hayes was able to come in. There's an awful lot of players here, and there's one or two more that you could make a fair case for these guys starting pretty much every day. Whereas with with John Kiley and his Limerick team, I feel like you know he has brought players in, and you know he he gave um, Philip O'Loughlin a chance there at wing back. I think O'Loughlin stepped Paddy, in. The panel. Paddy O'Loughlin, Paddy, Paddy, yeah, sorry, yeah. Paddy, Phil is his brother. Um, he he brought um, Paddy O'Loughlin in and out of the team. I think he stepped away from the panel, and he has tried to give lads opportunities to 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 kind of stake a claim for a place. But if that Limerick 15 doesn't start, it does feel like the guys coming in just, they don't fully have the trust of the management as much as they'd like to say they do, and they publicly always will. It's pretty clear that they picked the wrong team against Tipperary. And once they brought Galan and Dan Morrissey, who everyone, most people thought should have started anyway, once they came in, that was a big part of the reason that Limerick took over. Join the Our Game Supporters Club at Patreon for five euros per month to get audio podcasts of the Hurling and Football Show and much more exclusive material.